What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. First of all, um, Brian, we have to say rest in peace to Mr. Uh, Ray Stevenson. Yeah. It was shocking news to me because uh, I always thought of him as a, as, a, as a great, you know, actor. I think his breakout would have been the Acolyte because in the Acolyte, he looks quite good in that. And I think his first... A big role was uh, Rome, uh, HBO's Rome. Was it? Was was any a, a, a protagonist in that? He series? was in that. I believe you're right. Uh, he was always like a really good character actor. Like he, you know, certainly from our genre. You know, he was Volstagg in the in the Thor movies. He was, yes. you know, Punisher War Zone is not a great film, but he's in that. You know, I gotta be honest. He wasn't even that bad in what was it? Uh, GI Joe Retaliation. He was one I of the bad see guys that. in that. Um, he was and, in but, Dexter too. Yeah, so he he's always been like you know he's that third or fourth bill guy usually, and you you know him when you see him on site. He's never bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, gone too soon at, at age fifty eight. And you're right, the acolyte's a great point because I that, that I he that he completed that role, so that'll yes. probably be the last time maybe we see him on screen. But it Which looks like it's a great yeah. great finale. Yeah. Yeah. Condolences to family and friends and all those who knew him uh, personally. I'm sure uh, they will uh, miss him. When the names of these two individuals were brought up, especially one in particular, David Cohensworth, Brian. I first saw him in a trailer for a Netflix series called Hollywood. When I first saw him in that trailer, I said, hmm, but I didn't I didn't think about it too much after that. But when I first saw that trailer and I saw I never saw the show, but I remember seeing him in a, in a specific shot in that trailer. And I was like, wow, he, that looks interesting. And I was referring to Superman. And his, his name is being brought up, Brian. And also, Nicholas Hope as the possible Lex Luthor. Brian, I was... Uh, I was hoping to hear the name Jordan Patrick Smith as Lex Luthor. Um, perhaps it's not too late, but... Uh, this possible Superman, Brian, seems like a good choice. What do you think? Well, he fits the profile, right? So he's 29 years old. You know, he has the the dark hair, the blue eyes. Uh, he also, I think, fits the profile from the standpoint of he isn't that well known yet. He doesn't, you know, to your point, he doesn't have, like, he's been in some things of note, but mainly, you know, as sort of like a supporting character or a one-off character, he is not had that massive star turn uh, mm. already. And so I think that's definitely fits the idea of something that they would want for this role uh, he is also six foot four which is exactly what superman is in the comic he's six <laughs> foot four to 25 if you believe you know what we were told so yeah. he is six foot four so they don't have to do any um magic with that so we'll see i, I thought it was inter interesting in that report that it sounded like they wanted jake malordi to audition and he wouldn't do it which I thought was an interesting, you know, there is obviously, you know, we, we love the Superman character, but there is some stigma there. Mm -hmm. um, there's all, you know, there's people that talk about the curse of Superman, right? That like the yeah. curse of the part, right? And so you wonder, like, did he look at that and say for my career, like, I don't want to be 10, 12 years of Superman, even if I seem like I might be able to pull this off. So that you was an scared. interesting little, you got yeah, a little too, interesting little nugget that he did not actually want to put his name in. Okay. Okay. This would, uh, wow. If I was advising him and I was his agent, I'd be like, listen, man, this is a once, I hear you. I hear you. But James Gunn is doing something, I think is doing something special here. This is a once in a lifetime thing where if he pulls this off, you can be a star. For Your, your career is going to go superstar right after that role but he decided against it I, I, he he still has a a bright future ahead of him what do you think about nicholas holt as a possible lex luther he's been trying to be in this world for a wow. minute and he's being given this role what do you think of that uh uh 
of that possibility? I think it could work. Um, look, Nicholas Holt is a really talented actor. Uh, he, he, he's had some notable roles. You know, I think this genre will certainly remember him as being Hank McCoy in sort of Matthew Vaughn's incarnation of the X-Men. You know, he also had a notable supporting role in Mad Max Fury Road. Um, and he's done a lot of other other things. He's also, to your point, he is known for the near miss. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, he, you know, he, he missed out on opportunities as Batman. He missed out on a lot of franchise filmmaking throughout his career, some due to scheduling conflicts, yes. um, some due to just being the runner up. There's a little bit actually, uh, there's almost a, a whiff of kind of Henry Cavill's career prior to, you know, prior to the last few years and, he, and even now of like, he's just one, you know, one project away and not quite there. But I like the idea. I mean, look, I think Lex and, and Clark need to be contemporaries. You know, and Holt is a little bit older, but he's still like in his mid, early to mid thirties. So like with Corn Sweat being 29, like that makes sense. You don't want Lex to be 15 years older than Clark necessarily. In some ways, like if you were going to critique Hackman versus Reeves, or Christopher Reeve, that would be it, is that Hackman's yeah. age in 1978 relative to Christopher Reeve was pretty wide. Yes. Um, and I think in this case, it makes more sense and it opens up possibilities, love triangles. It opens up all sorts of things that you can do with Lex if he's younger. So I like that idea. Yeah. We've also heard rumors of possible female leads for Lois Lane, Brian. Uh, part, I don't have any real contenders for this role, Brian. There have been some names, Brian. Do you know it, uh, some of them that have been uh, mentioned? I do. Um, the one that I don't think will happen because of age, but I actually, when I heard it, was like, oh, I think she could actually do it, was Rachel Brosnahan, who uh, is a star of Marvel's Mrs. Mrs. Maisel. Um, okay. There's a report that she, she auditioned. Um, she's... 32 so that probably is on the outside of what they'd be looking for but she i feel like has the look she kind of has the the charisma and the energy if you watch that Maisel show and like mm-hmm. i thought that was and she's she's you know won emmys for that so i was like when i heard that name i was like well that would be really cool mm-hmm. i just don't know if they want to have someone who's already 32. the one i'm afraid of the one i'm down on is mary mouser hell no nah. she's um ralph macchio's daughter in the cobra kai series I am not a fan. I'm not. I love the show. I'm not a fan of, of her character or the way she plays it. I think she gets blown off the screen by yeah. some of the other actors, including Jola Moira Duena in particular. I do not want her being Lois. Now, she'd be a younger Lois Lane for sure, but I don't think she has the chops to pull that off. Yeah. I mean, in a, some time ago, my my wish list would have been uh, Rachel McAdams. I think, I, I think she would have been perfect for <laughs> Lois Lane perfect but she she would have needed to be um Brandon Routh's Lois Lane though yeah, right I mean just yeah. thinking age wise yes, that's, yes, that's yes, when yes, she yes, would have yes, had yes. to do it yeah yes yes uh Brian anything else before we well just, just the wanna... fact that like we said we can put a little bit of credence around some of these rumors it, 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 just because we know there's a casting director in place so and and, and James Gunn has kind of I think the other clue is James Gunn came out after some of these rumors hit and kind of said, I am not going to debunk as many of these reports as I have been, which is also to me a tell that like a lot of these are going to be real, that like at least a conversation was had, an audition tape was sent. Doesn't mean they'll be picked, but yeah, we're we're getting real here to where I still think by Comic-Con, there's still a chance that we get at least the Clark announcement. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. There's no way they're going to, like I said, I said this before, Brian, this Comic-Con is going to be epic. There's going to be epic and Mar- and everybody's going to be sitting there watching Marvel like, what you going to do? <laughs> 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 what you got big time? <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody's going to be looking at Marvel like, what you got? Because the Marvels ain't it. This is not it. This is not it. When I saw the, the, the Nicholas, um, the Nicholas Holt news, I did not interpret that to mean that despite Nicholas Holt's profile as an actor, I did not interpret that to mean that Lex would be the sole and lead villain of the film. Mm -hmm. Uh, I still think there is at least one more villain that might even be more important than Lex in this particular movie. It's just that Holt is signing on to kind of be the Lex for this universe. Um, That's how I read the, the news. So I feel like that's also a big piece of information we've heard nothing about. 
is uh, you know who else who else is going to be opposite Clark in, in, in this movie? Lex is going to be there until the end, Brian. That's exactly. That's why Holt wants this part in my mind. Like this is the thing that he can play across, you know, shows and films if necessary, and make it his and be the guy that to be the the best I've ever has ever done it. So. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. Um, Brian, as we get closer and closer to this uh, Comic-Con and the more news that starts to come out, I'm quite certain that you and I will have lots to discuss uh, with uh, the stakes that they're playing with here, Brian, for this Superman movie. This movie will be the one of the most talked about and most anticipated on everyone's list when this movie is announced when this date is announced when we see the first visuals it'll be on similar level of batman the first batman the, the batman the batman tra uh, trailer that we got it's gonna be that uh the anticipation is gonna be that great well, I think the other thing, if you're looking for hype, uh, David Zasloff never wanted to mince words about anything. Um, when he was talking about on their most recent earnings call about the state of DC, his quote, we are very bullish on DC. The Superman script first draft is done and James Gunn is on a mission from God. <laughs> <laughs> he did also say in the same call that he, you know, you take it for what it's worth that he obviously read and approved the script which given the writer strike is important this script came in completed a first draft that's allowing them to actually go out and do a lot of this work as they have a story to work off of so yeah he's he's hyped and he's telling everyone that this is going to be it so we'll see does this writer strike brian put superman in a position to because if some of these movies were going to be released around Superman and they're not at a place where they are capable of delivering on those dates because of the writer strike, Brian, is it possible that Superman, when it does get released, it'll be the only show in town that, that people go see over and over again because it has no competition? Yeah, I think... Well, I think, yeah, it definitely will have be, it'll definitely be in an advantage position because when they come off the strike, first off, the lead writer is James Gunn himself. So he is in this weird position right now where he's allowed to work on this film, but he cannot write, right? So he can cast, he can scout locations, he can set pre-pro, but he can't touch the script. Mm -hmm. But you know, because he's James Gunn, he's already working through his head the revisions so yeah. the second this strike comes off he's going to be ready to polish tweak like so that's it. i think they will be ahead of the game because they're good they're just going to have a they have a unified he has a unified vision of what he wants to say we'll see if it's great or not yeah. but it will allow him to fast track you know a, a completed production i don't think they're going to miss the 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 release deadline i think they'll be able to hold that clearly some other projects are going to have to move like and we'll talk about some of the Marvel projects, but it's like, we know projects that are getting rewritten, right? Projects that are getting, it might be some other changes that we've heard about. They can't do any of that right now. Mm -hmm. Cannot do any of that right now. So those projects are much more likely to slip. And yeah, you're right. Like 2025 was always looming to kind of be this Batman and Superman versus Kang Dynasty. And like, I don't think Kang Dynasty is going to show up at the rate that we're going. It could be like a DC year through and through. Yeah, yeah. Very, very interesting things to think about regarding the DCU, MCU, their movies, and uh, what's going on with Su Superman is big, man. Superman is big. We anticipate this movie to be huge if James Gunn can deliver on that promise. And I think, you know, I got to say, um, we're going to get a reminder, too, that Batman is big because the way Flash is being promoted and the way it's being staged... Batman is stealing the material. Yeah. And it is a reminder of that, the power of that character. That movie is now tracking toward a $150 million plus open. So you can 
take your Ezra Miller concerns and probably put them in the garbage can because people are are hyped. What? Hyped for this movie and they are not going to let it stop them from going. And that's, you know, we can say it doesn't matter. We can say it's going to reset the universe, but it does matter. If DC delivers a huge tentpole hit in the middle of the summer, that sets momentum. That sets momentum toward, you know, yeah, Blue Beetle's smaller scale, but really towards Superman and yeah. Batman part two. So it does matter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the hype is real for The Flash. And it's amazing thinking about um, how, I, especially me, I was thinking, um, when thinking about wanting to go see this film, um, when thinking about Ezra Miller's performance and a lot of people not liking him, me, myself, not liking his performance and they didn't really want to see his performance. Um, but the stuff that people have been saying as of late and it started a while back, Brian, and he's been consistent about how great this movie is. And we've seen hints of it in the trailers. So it'll be very interesting how much money this movie makes, Brian. It'll be very interesting. The talks around Ezra Miller and his participation, although we do think that he is not going to be sticking around after this. Still don't think so. Okay. I agree. Okay, because if they, they start talking about possibilities that this may, that he may still be around, then we got to still talk about Jonathan Majors. But anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about the Superman situation. Uh, what do you think about... Um, the, the current uh, possible cast for Superman and for uh, Lex Luthor. Uh, are you excited about those? Who uh, who are other individuals? Would you would you put in in those in those roles? Um, I already mentioned the previous one from that Lovecraft Country uh, show. I think it would have been perfect. But hey, they must see something. If when they read, they must have read for it, Brian. Right. I would assume I mean, they sound like these are actual auditions. They don't sound like they're, hey, with like a phone call or agent, you know, agent to James Gunn or whatever, or agent to Saffron. So there's no question that guy's going to get Superman. I can see it. I can see it. I saw it then in 2020 when that Hollywood uh, trailer came out. I was like, wow, that guy looks interesting. Anyway, uh, hit, hit that like and subscribe button, share it with your friends, and comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!